Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today we're gonna have a quick look at a, a technique that I've shown before. That thing um, I didn't, I, I, I might have not been clear enough when I explained it. It was this was months ago. So if you're if you've recently joined our channel, then I think you're gonna find a cool thing uh, or, or two about this trick. So uh, today in one of my classes, I was teaching um, my students uh, ZBrush, and we did this very nice Raven skull. Um, uh, in the newest uh, CBrush 2022 course, we do a cheetah skull for the first class. So I always like doing skulls for my first class whenever I'm teaching CBrush because they show you they show us a lot of the basic like forms and principles that we need to follow. Now I actually have like all of the process here. Do you guys want to see it real quick? Let me see if I can go all the way back to the beginning. And uh, it's the traditional like basic forms, secondary forms, tertiary forms, and then uh, just like the, the final result. So this was the original piece. As you can see, a move brush, clay buildup, a little bit of Damien standard, just moving pieces around, of course, following um, reference. And then little by little, just like pushing this thing all the way until we're finally like completed. So um, I really like this class because it's a, it's a three hour class. So it allows me to do a little bit more than what I usually do in these videos, which are between 25 and 30 minutes. Uh, so yeah, as I always mention, the more time you can dedicate to something, the better it's gonna look. Uh, that's part of art. Art never finishes, it just gets abandoned. I think that was a quote by Leonardo da Vinci. So yeah, you can invest infinite amount of time until you get like the perfect the perfect effect. So this is the final result after the details, a little alpha channels and stuff. And um, you guys know I'm a huge like fantasy nerd. So Odin, Odin from, from like Norse mythology is, um, it, it's kind of like related to ravens, like not related, but there's always ravens um, accompanying Odin. They're like the, the birds that oversee everything, right? So um, I thought, hey, what if, because I, I saw some raven skulls and some of them had some runes on them, like this sort of stuff, right? Uh, so what if I show you guys the way to do the beak? I wanna, I wanna make sure that the beak of the character is filled with runes because right now you can see that the beak has like nothing. And for this, we're actually gonna have to do a quick UB mapping. And the, I'm gonna show you a technique here instead of Seabrush that we can use to create a UB map. So one of the cool things is you can see here that this beak that we created is it's actually like pretty nicely like poly loop. When, when we did Siri measure, when building this guy right here, it actually created a very nice clean loop around the, the whole thing. So I'm gonna press control shift and I'm gonna go into a knife, uh, sorry, select a lasso and I'm gonna select the beak as close as possible to the, to the root of the beak. And then very, very cleanly or as clean as possible, I'm gonna start removing some pieces. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna have a seam and a mask and stuff, but the, the nicer you can get this cut whenever you're doing these sort of things, uh, the better. So something like that should work quite nicely. Let's grab all of this piece right here and there we go. So now as you can see, this beak is uh, divided into uh, two pieces. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into uh, poly groups and I'm gonna hit auto groups. Am I in full screen? No, okay. Oh, for a moment there, I thought it was in full screen. You guys have no idea how many times I've been doing like tutorials or recording lessons and then I realize I'm still in full screen and I have to do it again, it's horrible. So now I'm gonna grab uh, another section, in this case, the, the lower section, again, as clean as possible. There we go. And we're gonna, again, a group visible. So now, as you can see, we have three sections, the upper um, beak, the lower beak, and the main head of the of the character. And there's a very nice fancy tool here instead of Seabrush called uh, UB Master. UB Master has been around for, wow, like 10 years or more. It's a very nice plugin. Let me, let me bring the plugins out, there we go. So UB Master allows us to, as the name implies, uh, unwrap the, the element and, and get something out of this guy. So if I just click unwrap, uh, what you're gonna see is this thing is just gonna try to unwrap itself into a single island. In order to visualize UVs here instead of Seabrush, you're gonna go to the UV map section and we're gonna morph UV. So, I mean, this is not bad. Uh, just ignore the three-dimensionality of it. Imagine this is just like the 3D view. So it's it's not bad, but as you can see, it's not perfect either. And and we actually have like a very ugly cut here on the middle of the purple beak and, the, and this line right here. So we don't want that. So I'm gonna uh, control C, go back again. I'm gonna turn on this thing called polygroups and I really don't care about symmetry. I just care about like having a flat plane, right? So now if we hit on wrap, you're gonna see that we get three islands, th three polygroups and if we morph the UB, we're actually gonna get some, something a lot nicer, something like this. 
Now, this is perfectly fine. You can actually bring this into, into like a, a Substance Painter and, and, and Paint. By the way, did you guys see that we just released a new Substance Painter? I'm probably going to be doing, or I probably already did by the time you see this, uh, a one, like one specific video announcing that course. But yeah, more courses, more stuff for you to learn. So yeah, check that one out. So yeah, this UV works pretty, pretty nice. However, I would like to change uh, the way that the UV is, is laid out a little bit. And unfortunately, we can't really do it here inside of, uh, of inside of CBrush. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to export this low poly version to Maya. So I'm gonna export this. I'm gonna export it to the uh, to the desktop for now, just to, to keep this a little bit faster. I actually already have this. We were going over some rendering techniques and stuff. We don't need this delete all of this and I'm gonna import the skull so here we go and that's the the low poly okay this is very common uh, it's horrible when this happens and this is because we did not turn off the uh, poly selection over here in the export uh, it's not an export huh that's weird it's usually an export though mm, yeah is this not a is this not a polymer 3d huh Okay, for some reason that was not a polymesh 3D. Super weird. I'm a little bit confused. Uh, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna export this thing, but instead of OBJ, I'm gonna say FBX. And let's try this. So PM 3D Cuervo. There we go. Cuervo is crowd in Spanish. So let's go to Maya. Let's delete everything here. File, import, and it's the PM 3D Cuervo. There we go. There we go. So now this one is working and we can see that we have the UVs like nicely laid out. So what I'm going to do, because we're going to be using this, is I, I really don't need the head, right? Like we're not going to do anything with the head. We're not going to texture anything. So I'm going to make it really, really, really small and have it like down here on the little corner like that. And then I'm going to rotate this guys so they're first facing like uh, down. And I'm going to make them as big as possible so that they both fit on the on this guy right here. We're going to have to make them a little bit smaller. I mean, one thing we could do is we can rotate one of this and it should still give me like the same sort of like proportion. Oh, I really want to get as much bus, uh, as much size as possible. This is going to be important. Uh, let's move this a little bit more. There we go. And there, even if there's like a little bit of overlap there, shouldn't be that much of a problem. Just make sure that everything is inside the, the little square. Perfect. So this is going to be my new UV. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to say file, export selection. I'm going to export it with the same name, PBM3D Cuervo. Export selection, yes. Go back to ZBrush. Go back to my original one, this one that has like the, the million polygons. Because this one has the, the subdivision levels and, and we're going to be using those. Yep, there we go, 3.5 million. So I'm going to go to the lowest of division. I'm going to hit import, well, import, and we're going to import this guy again. Should be the same thing, just hit OK. And um, actually, it did not import. That's really weird. Okay, let's export this as an OBJ. Sometimes the FBX doesn't work as, ex 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 as expected, so let's do this OBJ. Let's call this Cuervo 002, there we go. And we go here, subtool, select, not this one, it's... Uh, this one, Corpo 002, that's my, I should have my subdivisions here. Yeah, so all of my details are still there. So low subdivision level, and we hit import, and we import Corpo 002, open, there we go. So now we still have our subdivision levels, as you can see here, all of the detail is there. And technically, we should go to UVs, and if we morph the UVs, we have the proper UVs. So the big UVs that we have, perfect. So our UVs are set up. And I know this is a little bit confusing. I would consider this to be a little bit of an advanced technique. Uh, but if you're already like familiar with ZBrush, if you've seen the, the ZBrush course, then doing something like this should be possible. Now I'm gonna open Photoshop. We need Photoshop. And we're gonna download some Norse runes over here. So let's look for oh, Norse runes. Oh my God, come on. <laughs> Norse runes pattern because I wanted some sort of like titleable pattern like something like this pretty cool uh, and even if it has like a what's the word uh, like a watermark uh, the trick that we're going to use it, it's not really that big of a deal uh, however if you can find something that's uh, completely free that also helps so I mean we could do this I think this would be pretty cool right like just like letter runes all over the place so I'm going to copy this image and I'm going to go into Photoshop here 
I'm going to create a new file. And I'm just going to make it a square file. So it's going to be like, let's say, um, 2048 by 2048. There we go. And just paste this. There we go. I'm going to definitely scale this down. So we have like smaller rooms, probably like this. And I'm going to duplicate this. Let's see if it's actually tileable. Yeah, it's quite tileable. There we go. And just grab this guy again. And let's move this down so it matches. There we go. And once more. Uh, a little more. There we go. So that's my like my runic pattern, right? Like all over the place. Now, if you want, you can export the UV map from the from Maya and like actually like line up all the patterns. Right now, I just want like a general pattern around the whole the whole beak. So that's why I'm going for this sort of trick. And I'm just gonna save this. Let's save it on, on the desktop for now. I'm being very disorganized today. I'm sorry, guys. It's a, it's a little bit late, and I still need to finish a couple of other uh, assignments. So, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Let's call this a runic pattern. There we go. Let's save maximum quality and hit OK. Now, we're going to go here into, into ZBrush, and we're going to go to the highest subdivision level of our character. Let's turn off Polyframe. And we want to import the texture. So we're going to go into Texture, click here, Import, Import the Texture, Open. There we go. Now the texture is inside of Sears, but it's not applied anywhere. I'm going to select the texture and I'm going to flip it because uh, by default, Sears flips everything. So my UVs are flipped when I imported the character. So I need to flip the, char the, the thing as well so that the lines uh, like properly align with what I want. So there we go. Now I'm going to go to uh, texture, texture map, and I can load in a texture map on my character. And look at this. We get this a very nice like distribution of letters all around the beaks of my character all around this looks amazing. However, this is just the texture. This is just like like painting or, or texturing this character like in any other software. And uh, what I want to do is I want to create a mask that grabs all of those elements. So I'm going to go to masking and I'm going to say mask by uh, ba -ba, mask by color and then mask by intensity, which is like like the value darkness or lightness, right? So if I say mask by intensity, now I've created a mask, let's turn off the texture. I created a mask where the runes are not masked and everything else is masked, right? So, so that's exactly what I want. Uh, because now what I can do is I can just grab my brush. Let me turn on my tablet real quick. And I can grab something like the like the uh, clay builder brush. Actually, I need to close Photoshop. There's a weird bug, by the way. If anyone is using a Huion tablet and they're and you're going crazy because you don't know why uh, when you're using Photoshop and ZBrush, ZBrush stops working properly. There's a conflict between them, so you can't have both of them open. I'm actually been using Krita uh, to do that because otherwise I, I can't. It's just uh, something messed up. So here I'm just gonna start like doing a little bit of uh, of carving. I'm just using Alt to to go into negative view, and I don't want all of them to have like the same density. So I'm just just like varying my pressure so that some of the lines have a little bit more more damage, and some of the lines are a little bit cleaner. There we go. And just go all across the character. You can also use like an inflate the form or you can use like the just like a like a balloon inflate. Like there's a there's a lot of ways to do this, but I really like this one. And when we remove this, look at this. We have a rune pattern going all across my character. I definitely want to add a little bit more like runic pattern here on the union there. And there we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So this technique, I like to use it quite a lot for this sort of stuff. Like imagine having to draw each individual rune by itself. It would take forever, right? But with this, we got this. And this could be easily baked into a prop, like into a game prop, into an actual like uh, advanced game prop. And uh, and you could like have a really nice effect over there. You could also bring this into like, um, whatever. I'm going to soften this because the, the elements are a little bit too sharp. So I'm going to soften this. And uh, you can 3D print this. I'm actually thinking about 3D printing this. It will look very, it will be really sick. Imagine I give one of this to my Dungeons and Dragons players. Like you find the cursed, the cursed skull of, uh, of an old raven or something. So yeah, that, that's it. And, and I mean, you can use the same technique or you can use the same technique for the, for the head. If you want to, if you want to like design and create like specific patterns across the whole, um, the whole head, that will also be very, very uh, interesting. So 
yeah, that's it, guys. Small video today, just a, an overview of this old technique. I know we did this before. We did it with a helmet, but it was it was like combined with other things, and I wanted to keep it like in a single video. So what should we call it? Like uh, complex decals inside of Sirius or something like that. Um, and yeah, remember, tomorrow we have our portfolio review. Today is the last day to upload your portfolios, okay? So make sure to check the link down here in the description. And if you want me to take a look at your portfolio and give you some tips, some tricks, some things that you might need to do, drop a folder there with your name, a little notepad, either with link to your uh, art station or any place where you're saving your uh, portfolio. And of course, um, or your renders, like whatever you want to deliver, just drop it in there. And yeah, that's it, guys. I'm, uh, uh, the weekend is upon us, so let's let's have some fun. Let's uh, rest a little bit because it's been a, it's been a difficult week, uh, at least for me. Hopefully not for everyone, uh, but it's been a long, long week. So yeah, that's it. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.